He thanked me with a smiling nod, measured out a few minims of a red tincture, and added one of the powders. Um, why is uh, Stevenson chosen for this uh, potion to be red? Uh, James isn't here. Uh, Joe? Um, Good. Develop that, please. Excellent. It suggests the violence that's uh, going to happen when he takes this potion. Hyde is violent. The reason Hyde is violent is he doesn't have a conscience. He doesn't have that thing stopping him uh, from acting on his desires. So we've all felt a uh, rage where we just think, I really want to punch that person, but we hold back because we've been trained not to. But Hyde isn't held back. Uh, and that's why it's red. Harry, you had a question? So the, the blood that's being spilt, who's in particular in this story? Brilliant. So Sir Danvers Carew he kills. And also, he's going to kill Jekyll by taking over and then by killing himself. So this is a bloody act. Um, that's... Highlighted again a second time with the reddish hue. So he's, uh, Stevenson is suggesting to us again that um, Hyde is violent. It's Hyde who's going to drink this, remember. Um, then we've got this other language that he used to describe the potion. So fumes of vapour. Fumes we associate with um, smoke, vapour with smoke. And it's that kind of hellish description that we've had before. So Stevenson is suggesting that Hyde is evil, that he's linked with hell. Um, you'll remember last lesson we focused on the idea of the description of Satan, which I'll get to next. So there's a link with hell and Hyde. So one question we have to ask is, is Stevenson a Christian? who is suggesting that these sorts of scientific experiments are evil. They go against God. Yeah. The reason that was relevant to the Victorians is Charles Darwin has come along and he said, look, we're evolved from primitive creatures. We haven't been created like it says in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. God didn't just make us out of earth. And Eve wasn't just made out of Adam's rib. That's all just a story, he's saying. We've actually been descended from other organisms. Yeah? And so he could trace, he could trace the evolutionary path down to uh, a primate, which was simplified as we've come from monkeys. Um, now, why that's important is science is suddenly saying, in Victorian times, the Bible isn't true. There might still be a God, but the Bible is just a way of telling stories about God to try and understand God. And for Christians, that was really difficult. Because if you're looking at the Bible and you've read it all your life as true, and now suddenly science proves it's not true, there's big problems. And so Stevenson is wrestling with this idea, are we actually living in a Christian world with a real God who wants us to behave in Christian ways, or is that just a story we've told ourselves to stop ourselves being like Hyde? So one reading of this is um, Stevenson saying, there's no God, there's no religion, we are what we are. Or another reading is that Stevenson is on the side of God and against science, which is why science creates the evil Hyde. Yeah, two really different ideas. One, Hyde is what we're really like. Or two, science makes us that way. Science is evil. We've got to stop science. You decide which way you think he's going. Uh, any questions? Is it on the what paragraph? Yes, we, we linked it with the fumes of vapour which were suggestive of hell. And we link that to the image of um, Hyde being like Satan, like the devil. I'll make that link clearer later. Um, if we look at the colours of the potion, uh, it's deliberately dark, which again is symbolic of evil. Um, purple is suggestive of blood as well. There's a famous line in a poem by John Donne. Um, 
purpled with the blood of innocence. So the idea is that purple is linked to blood here. Then we've got this Greek word, metamorphosis, which means to change from one state to another. He's talking about the potion, but of course the potion is a symbol for Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll has a metamorphosis. He changes from one being into Hyde, the other. Now, the problem with this is a metamorphosis in Greek is not a bad thing. Metamorphosis is a good thing. You change into a better being. Uh, but in this story, Jekyll changes into Hyde. So could Stevenson be suggesting that Hyde is a better way of being than Jekyll? That seems impossible, doesn't it? <coughs> Anyone got a view? Could Hyde be better than Jekyll, or is Jekyll better than Hyde? No volunteers. In which case, Harry Watts. Which is the better being? Because? Um. <coughs> okay. Yes. Okay, well, I'm asking for your opinion. There's no point guessing. I haven't got a right answer in my head. Jack? Uh, he hasn't got a conscience, which means he hasn't got any guilt, which means he's probably a happier person. Ah, now we've got an interesting idea. <coughs> Hyde is happier because he doesn't have a conscience, which means he doesn't have guilt. Okay, so that's one way of looking at Hyde. Um, he's not a better person morally, but he's a happier person because he does what he wants without worrying about it. Um, okay, let's look at the next bit. And now, said he, to settle what remains, will you be wise? Will you be guided? Will you suffer me to take this glass in my hand and to go forth from my house without further parley? So, um, hide. Parley means talk. Uh, Hyde is saying here to Dr. Lanyon, right, you can let me take this potion in private and you never have to see what's going to happen. Yeah, you never have to face this image of me turning from Hyde into Jekyll. Of course, Lanyon doesn't know that's what's going to happen. He just knows that there's some sort of scientific experiment going on here. He's no idea what it is. Interestingly, though, Lanyon decides to watch it. So if we go back to the role of science again, being against Christianity, um, Lanyon should sense here that there's something evil is going to happen, but he watches it anyway. Josh, you're talking all the way through this. It's really rude. You can stop. Thank you. Uh, right. Or... Has the greed of curiosity too much command of you? So look how he says that curiosity isn't a good thing. It's greedy. So this again is an attack on science. Yes, Stevenson is suggesting, through Hyde, that science is greedy. Curiosity is not a good thing. Because curiosity is proving that the Bible is a story. That the Bible isn't fact. The other thing that's being proved at this time is that the world is much older than the Bible says. So if you add up all the years in the Bible, it's about 6,000 years. But in the Victorian times, they're discovering dinosaur bones. They're going down through layers of rock and realising that the Earth is billions of years old. That again suggests that the Bible is a story. Yeah, all the events in it are necessarily <coughs> true. And that's really troubling. Uh, okay, think before you answer, for it shall be done as you decide. Here, Hyde is tempting Lanyon, and the Bible starts with a temptation story. The temptation is, here's my apple, it's not actually an apple, it's a fruit. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, Eve takes the fruit, but the fruit's got a name. It's the, No, the name of the fruit in the Bible is the knowledge of 
of good and evil. Listen. Taking the apple is wrong because it gives Adam and Eve knowledge of what's good and what's evil. Before they eat the apple, it's not really an apple, before they eat the fruit, they don't know good and evil. They just know living. There is no right and wrong. Once they understand right and wrong, then they can start to do stuff that's wrong. They can start to commit sin. How is that like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Hold on, someone's blabbing. I'll take a volunteer. Thank you, Josh. Because Jekyll doesn't know, when he's Jekyll, he doesn't know about bad. So he turns into Hyde. As soon as you take the photo, that's like the apple, then he knows what bad stuff is. Yes, except I'm going to challenge you. So taking the potion is definitely like taking the fruit. He releases the bad of Hyde. But you started by saying Jekyll doesn't know what bad is at the start. Is that true? So what's Jekyll's state at the start? Brilliant. He knows about bad, but he doesn't commit it. When we're writing, we're not going to use the word bad. What would Christians call it? Sin, exactly. So we'll talk about the knowledge of good and evil or sin. There was a hand up at the back. No? Okay. Which Sam? Is the, um, phrase which represented the good and bad. Right. Think before you answer, for it shall be done as you decide. That's where Hyde is tempting Lanyon. And so I went from the temptation here to the temptation in Genesis, the knowledge of good and evil, and Josh linked that <laughs> temptation to the potion. And so for Jekyll... That is the equivalent of the knowledge of good and evil. The forbidden fruit is the potion. Okay. You shall be left as you were before. So if you don't watch, you'll be innocent. You won't know about this. And neither richer nor wiser, unless the sense of serving rendered to a man in mortal distress may be counted as a kind of riches of the soul. So Stevenson deliberately gets Hyde to talk about the soul to tell us that He's writing about Christianity here, this idea of the soul. Because if we live in a Christian world, our soul matters. Because when we die, it's the soul that goes to heaven or hell. Yeah? So, he can keep hold of his soul by not finding out about what this potion does. He can stay innocent, just like Adam and Eve can stay innocent in the Garden of Eden if they never eat that fruit. But Lanyon chooses not to stay innocent. Why? Why does Lanyon... Dis Thank you, Harry. Brilliant. What does um, Stevenson link curiosity to? No volunteers? I'll pick a name. Archie? What does Stevenson link curiosity to? Um... What's going against religion in this bit that I've been harping on about? The murder? Uh, I haven't really mentioned the murder much. <coughs> Nikki? Huh? Science is what's going against religion. Okay. How is science going against religion, Archie? Uh, the theories instead of the Bible, they go like the evolution. Brilliant. Through the theory of evolution. Who put that forward? Charles Darwin. Excellent. Um, so... Science is linked to curiosity. This is what's leading man the wrong way. Nikki. Isn't Lanyon a doctor? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, it is obvious that he'll want to because he's a doctor. Um, let's dig a little deeper there. Uh, Stevenson has decided that Jekyll should be a doctor. But also Lanyon should be a doctor. What's he saying about doctors? Um, Harry. Uh, which one? I'll take either. But it was it was what? But you've already had a go. Go on. Okay. What's what's Stevenson saying about doctors? He's introduced two main characters with doctors in this novel. He's saying that in that sort of time, you've had loads of people about this doctor. Yes. What's his view about that? Uh, it's good. 
Because? Okay, would anyone like to argue that it's good? Anyone want to argue that it's evil? You can't sit on the fence. You can say it could be this or it could be that, but you can't not decide. James? Why would Langdon object to Jekyll's scientific studies? Uh, as we read on, we'll find he objects to them because he doesn't think they're properly scientific. He thinks they're mystical and transcendental, which means they're all about the mind. Um, they're not about real things. He doesn't trust them. Harriet? Yes, it, yes, it is. Uh, so what's your argument there? Yes, you're absolutely right. So, from the scientific point of view, you have to experiment, don't you? Yes, which is why we've got the soul reference here. So, Lanyon is a religious scientist, and that's why he's going to commit suicide. Um, Lanyon, you remember, gives up on life, doesn't actually kill himself, he just stops wanting to live. Uh, Nikki? Hold on, we haven't got everyone listening. Um, which people? Yes. I, I guess a lot of it would have depend on how much they trusted science and how much they trusted Christianity. So not every doctor would have thought the same way, which is why we've got different reactions from Lanyon and Jekyll here. Um, okay, let's move on a bit. Uh, a new province of knowledge and new avenues to payment power shall be laid open to you. Again, this is like the temptation. For a scientist, having new knowledge is excellent. That's what science is for. Just for, so we understand the world better, we get new knowledge. However, Hyde links that knowledge to fame and power. So Hyde could be suggesting that that's what Jekyll was after. Jekyll was after fame and power. What sort of power does Jekyll have when he takes the potion? Lauren. Um, Why is that a power, being able to do what you want? Um, because he can do stuff like hurt other people and not feel bad about it. Brilliant, you can hurt others and not feel bad about it. Um, why doesn't Jekyll get fame? If that's what he wanted, why doesn't he get fame? Uh, James isn't here. Ollie. Yeah, yeah. I've said it twice, but I'll do it a third time, pretend you're listening. Why doesn't why doesn't he get fame? Although you could answer your one, why does he want fame if you want? Why does he have to get fame? Yeah. Oh, he's too crazy. Oh, he's too good. Ah, explain. <laughs> Uh, okay, prove it. Then we can't accept your point of view if you haven't got evidence. I'll come back to you if you get a new idea. Harriet, then Harry. Yes. That's a really interesting interpretation. I've never heard that one before. Um, you could use that in your writing. Um, a really interesting interpretation. Harry? Um, you've got like, overconfidence. You think you've got the best evidence. And 
Excellent. Excellent. Uh, when we go through, uh, we'll look at this language like superiors here. Um, Jekyll is overconfident. He does think he's better than everyone else. Tyler. Uh, it also uh, leads to uh, them being equal. Explain. Well, because everyone um, earlier on in the passage or writing of us, yes. um, they said that he was informed and no one understood why or yes. didn't understand him, therefore they didn't really. Brilliant. So I'm just trying to find a bit about fame again. Yeah, bottom left. Third uh, there, thank you. Um, you're absolutely right. When Jekyll becomes Hyde, as Tyler suggests to us, he becomes deformed in a way that people can't explain, and that stops him becoming famous because no, everybody is repulsed by him rather than being drawn to him. Um, so, Hyde again is tempting Lanyon with the offer of power and fame when he finds out what this potion can do. Uh, but then he gives him a contrast. Your sight shall be blasted by a prodigy to stagger the unbelief of Satan. Um, this is a really weird idea. Satan is against God, but you can't say that he doesn't believe in God because he's actually fighting God, so he must believe he's there. So what doesn't he believe in? What doesn't Satan believe in? Um, Sam? He doesn't believe in his goodness and what he does. Excellent. He doesn't believe in the goodness of God. Yeah? So uh, Hyde is suggesting that if you, um, if you see me take this potion and you see what happens, you will stop believing in the goodness of God. Why will Lanyon stop believing in the goodness of God when he sees what happens with the potion? Harry Morse. Excellent. Brilliant. Because God isn't stopping him from turning evil, that suggests that goodness doesn't exist. What would God's argument be against Satan there? You know, why does God allow people to do evil things? So they can live. Brilliant. Yeah, he's got to give people a choice of whether they're going to go to heaven or to hell. Harriet. Yes. So God gives us free will, so we choose to act good. And if we don't choose to act good, then we're punished and we go to hell. Um. So that's his argument. Hyde's argument is the opposite. Hyde is suggesting that if God allows us all to do evil things, well, is God actually good? Because if I harm somebody, all right, I might go to hell, but it's not going to help the person I've harmed. What's the Christian argument that makes that okay? So if I kill Jack, yeah, uh, I go to hell, but why is it not a problem for God if I kill Jack, hands will be lovely. Harry? Well, why is that not a problem to God then? Because he's good. And therefore? He deserves to go to heaven. Yeah, he's going to go to heaven. So, from God's point of view, it doesn't matter that Jack gets killed because the important thing isn't our life here, it's our life in heaven. Jack just gets there quicker. I go to hell. So that's, that's the Christian argument that Hyde is attacking. Yeah, Hyde doesn't agree with that. He's like Satan who thinks that God isn't good. Okay, let's go down to this bit here. It's well, replied my visitor. Lanyon, you remember your vows. What follows is under the seal of your profession. Uh, so doctors take up two vows. One is that they won't harm people. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. But the other is a vow of confidentiality. So if I'm a patient of a doctor and I tell them something, that, that's secret. And that's still there now. Yeah, The, the doctor-patient confidentiality 
So, it, for example, the police just can't ask a doctor about my medical history. They have to get the court's permission to ask because that relationship between patient and doctor is confidential. Why is this going to be so important to hide, Harriet? Excellent. Excellent. How do you link vows to God? Yeah, they. Excellent. They they're called wedding vows. So is this idea that um, doctors make this promise to God? Yeah, because it's a Christian society that we're talking about. Um, he knows. Hyde knows that when Lanyon sees this, he's not going to be able to tell anyone. That's important because he's going to find out that Dr. Jekyll is the murderer because Dr. Jekyll is Hyde. Hyde kills Sir Danvers Carew, but that really means that Dr. Jekyll kills Sir Danvers Carew. So Lanyon is going to find out that Dr. Jekyll is a murderer, but he can't go to the police. He can't tell anyone that Jekyll and Hyde are the same people. It's, it's a secret that he's got to keep. And that's why he chooses to die. Yeah, he thinks to himself, I can't keep this evil secret. And um, that's one reason he chooses to die. Uh, Nikki. So they would have been even many ways because it kind of sounds supernatural. Absolutely true as well. Uh, Harriet. And wouldn't it be like the pressure of going to hell because he's broken the vow? Yeah. Yeah, so if he does break his vow, he will believe that his own soul will go to hell because he's gone against God, that promise to God he's made. Uh, so the moment that Lanyon sees this transformation, he feels he's compromised, his soul is in danger. And so it's much easier to die now when he's still good than if he gives in to temptation later and, and starts telling people what he's seen. Um, so he, he dies now to save his soul, which is a kind of weird idea. Um, that's why he can't commit suicide, because if Lanyon commits suicide, then God won't accept him, because that's a, that's a crime against God. He can, in this novel, still go to heaven by just giving up on living, as long as he doesn't actually kill himself. How do you do that? Uh, who asked how do you do that then? Josh. Um, that's a really good question. So part of that leads us to the melodrama idea. So the Victorians believe that that could actually happen. You could just give up on life. Um, if you look at medical science now, that is also still possible. It sounds kind of weird, but you will often see an elderly husband and wife, one of them dies, and then the next one will die within about a month because they just give up. Um, it's, I know, I don't know how. I don't know, I don't know what the link is between the mind and the body that would allow your brain to actually give your body the message, we've had it, and the body to actually say, I understand that message, and stop working. I don't know how that would be. But certainly the Victorians believe that that was possible. Uh, okay, thank you very much for filming, Charlie. Uh,